Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Mill Creek Television, the Mill Creek TV government channel. Depending where you have your cable coming into your house, we're either on channel 9 or 97.2. No matter how you get us, thanks for joining us. All aboard, as they might say, because today my guest is Brian Pitzer from All Aboard Erie. Yes, is it about trains? Yes. Is it about you? And yes, it is. So let's introduce you to Brian Pitzer, the executive director of All Aboard Erie. Brian, you've been around with us now for a little bit of time. I think you're getting some traction. The, the wheels are starting <laughs> to turn here. And uh, you got four or five days. Tell us everything about All Aboard Erie. Where do you stand right now? Or first of all, let's do this. What is it? What is All Aboard Erie? Uh, All Aboard Erie is a, a small but feisty uh, <laughs> uh, nonprofit organization right here in Erie that mm -hmm. is uh, trying to bring uh, high speed rail and mm -hmm. other transportation issues um, into reality here, uh, right here in Erie. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been together five years since uh, 2009. And, uh, uh, we've grown and uh, we are now focusing, uh, our major, major project is a um, high-speed rail study between mm -hmm. here and Pittsburgh. Okay. Now, a lot of people are very, very interested in this. A lot of people are coming back to high rail, p rail period. And when you say high speed, I think you're probably defining about 110 miles an hour, so we're not going to bullet here. That's right. But before we go forward, Brian, do you have a website or a phone number, an office where people can reach you and say, hey, I'd like to help you out. I, like, I, I know a lot about that. Well, I appreciate that very much. Yes, uh, our, the best way to reach us is uh, by email. It's simply rail at allaboarderie.com. R-A-I-L. Yes. At allaboarderie, one word, okay. dot com. All right. And we have a Facebook page, All Aboard Erie, mm -hmm. as well. Okay. And um, you're the executive director. I'm the executive okay, director. Super. Now, you can notice that behind us, there are high speed rail destination future. Cleveland Erie Buffalo uh, Rail Corridor, all kinds of things there. So is it fair to say that this is your plan for now? Cleveland Erie Buffalo or maybe Erie Pittsburgh? I'm, I'm not sure. It, it's, it's yours to tell us where you want to go. Right. Um, we've, we've looked at several uh, different um, priorities for us and uh, we've been working with a consultant and the consultant has suggested to us that our first uh, step should be looking at the rail routes between Erie and Pittsburgh. Okay. Uh, there's a number of reasons for that, but uh, uh, we're taking that advice to heart and mm -hmm. we are focusing on raising funds for a route study mm -hmm. uh, to look at which the, what's the best way to get to Pittsburgh from Erie uh, over the different rail routes that now exist. But there are routes that do exist, but they're mostly freight routes? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. I was surprised to learn that um, if you travel from Erie to uh, New York City, eventually going through Buffalo, Albany, et cetera, et cetera, or Erie, Chicago, and I'm going, why does it take so long? Come on, I mean, the train going 60 miles an hour, if it, it's not going to take as long as it takes. Well, I didn't realize that you have to pull over and let the freight go through. Now, is that going to be the same thing when you have the high speed? Is the freight going to get the preference here? or the passenger's train going to get the preference? Well, that's a very good question, and that's something that has to be worked out. By law, Amtrak is supposed to have priority over freight trains. Uh, but mm. in practice, it just doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Okay. And so there are often delays between uh, Erie and Chicago, primarily, mm. uh, because of the freight traffic. And now with the these oil trains coming from the, the Dakotas, uh, there are even more, just even more rail traffic, more freight traffic to compete with. So it, it becomes tougher. Mm -hmm. well, what we want to do is uh, ideally establish perhaps some separate uh, trackage for high-speed rail that would uh, uh, keep the freight and the uh, mm -hmm. uh, passenger train separate as much as possible. Okay, let's go back a little bit. Let's roll back the clock for the history. Why did we stop riding the rails? What happened? Uh, the automobile became easy to mass produce. People wanted the independence. They liked that sitting in my car, not sharing the car with 40, 60 other people. A lot of, lot of history, I'm sure, behind that. Well, uh, primarily the, the, uh, the downfall of passenger rail began in the 1950s with the construction of the interstate highway system. And um, it, it facilitated uh, families staying in cars. It facilitated the what I call uh, suburban blight, the, the spread of uh, population away from uh, urban cores. And so that's why you see uh, cities, inner cities declining in part because uh, of the automobile took people out of the cities. Mm -hmm. And uh, people just found it more convenient 
uh, to take cars. And at that time in our history, in the 1950s and 60s, gasoline was very cheap. Oh, yes. And cars were pretty cheap, too. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it was just an easy thing to do. And unfortunately, um, by building the uh, interstate highway system, uh, which in itself was a good idea, um, the problem was it now created an uneven playing field where you had the highways, which were hev heavily supported by gasoline taxes and other things, versus the privately owned uh, railroads, which didn't have the, those kinds of subsidies and support mm -hmm. that the uh, highway system did. And so it became uh, a, a money-losing proposition for the, the private passenger rail corporations, and eventually they turned everything over to Amtrak, and, mm -hmm. the, and that's, that's how we got where we are. As long as we're talking about the history of this, I can't help but think, but Europe and Japan, they've done this really well for so long. I mean. Didn't the light go off somewhere and say, look at what they have over there? I mean, people travel to Europe and they go to take a Euro, your rail pass, the trains run on time. I mean, you know, it, it's, and they're clean and they're efficient. Here, mm, I'm not knocking them, but mm, um, why didn't we learn our lessons 50 years ago or, or more, perhaps? And it's, it's timely you should mention that because Japan just celebrated the 50th anniversary of its uh, high-speed rail system. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's also uh, very popular in Europe. It has to do with uh, a number of factors, uh, primarily the, because the automobile was so easy to use, people weren't that um, inclined to, to feel the need for high-speed rail. And at the same time, we were developing our, our uh, 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 airline service, air travel, mm, was mm. was growing as well. Sure. So distances over 500 miles, air was the, the natural uh, extension. Uh, for less than that, um, uh, cars were, were the preferred method. Mm -hmm. And so trains kind of fell on that no man's land. Um, and, and our system, you know, our um, history was, and perhaps with Canada, it was pretty unique in that, um, in that the other developed nations didn't have the interstate highway system that we do, um, and uh, so they turned their attention to. Eisenhower, I believe. Yes. The Eisenhower administration started that. You'll even see those signs occasionally in some places. Um, but l let's talk about the, the economics of this, perhaps the environmental side of this, is yes, cars are not polluting as much as they used to, but I think I would venture that passenger rail would be even more efficient and less environmentally harmful? Is that safe to say that? That's correct. Um, uh, it's been shown uh, scientifically that uh, rail travel is much more efficient in terms of miles per gallon and, or, or, uh, mm -hmm. or miles per uh, passenger, uh, and also uh, environmentally, it's fewer emissions per mile per passenger uh, than uh, virtually any other uh, transportation source. Oh, okay. So it, yeah. it, it, the future is there. Speaking of the future, let's assume it's going to be Cleveland to Erie or Erie to Buffalo or whatever. Let's, let's leave Erie to Pittsburgh perhaps just for a time out of it. Um, how are you going to make it so that the rail can travel at that higher 110 mile an hour speed? What has to be done to accommodate that? Um, most uh, uh, existing freight lines can handle up to 110 miles per okay. hour now okay. with some modifications. You might have to add a, a few sidings here and there. You might have to change the signaling a little bit so the crossing gates come down sooner, that, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Okay. Um, and so that's why 110 miles per hour seems to be the sweet spot for mm -hmm. uh, the next step for us. Beyond that, if you get faster than uh, the 110 up to 125 or so, then you're going to definitely need uh, separate tracks uh, that are uh, closed off from uh, any other traffic, uh, what they call grade separation. Um, and that just becomes more expensive. In my notes, it says that we're kind of really lagging here. I mean, there are other states that are probably way ahead of us because they've started the impact studies already saying, look, we need to get this done so we know how much money we're going to have to spend. Can you give us some examples of other states that are already on board doing this? Uh, and how are they faring? Is it actually in the planning stage? Or is they actually running them to that point where people are actually getting on? I mean, if you live in the New York City suburbs, taking a train is breathing in and breathing out. That's, that's, no, that's a no-brainer. So again, uh, where are they in the planning stage? And is anybody actually 
got the wheels on the road and moving. <laughs> uh, the answer is yes, there, there are states where that is happening right now. Um, uh, let's take a neighboring state of New York. Mm -hmm. uh, they're actually two steps ahead of us. Not only have they completed the feasibility study for what they call the Empire Corridor, which is New York City to Rochester, uh, Albany, and to Buffalo, mm -hmm. but they've also they've even done the environmental impact study, which is a much more in intensive study. Uh, they completed that over a year ago. Uh, so there are two steps ahead of us. Um, in Indiana right now, a group similar to ours is uh, about to begin their feasibility study for a high-speed rail, 110 miles per hour, connecting Columbus to Fort Wayne to Chicago. Uh, California has just had their groundbreaking ceremony for their true high-speed rail of 220 miles per hour. Mm. Um, and that's a very ambitious uh, statewide project. Uh, good luck to them. Uh, yeah, what kind of a dollar figure there? <laughs> uh, $68 billion is ah, what they're looking at. Jump change for Jerry Brown. <laughs> <laughs> but there's other, a couple of other projects which are quite interesting, uh, mm -hmm. will be very uh, uh, illuminating for us to follow. One is in Texas, mm -hmm. uh, where private investors are looking at connecting Dallas to Houston, uh, and Fort Worth and Dallas to Houston, by true high-speed rail, mm -hmm. and that's a distance of a little over 200 miles an hour, uh, uh, 200 miles, wow. and they're talking about 200 mile an hour uh, traffic. Um, they think they can actually make, make money at that. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other high-speed rail project that's uh, privately uh, uh, funded is in Florida, where a group of private investors called All Aboard Florida mm -hmm. uh, is um, uh, in the process of planning to build um, 110 mile per hour traffic between uh, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and um, um, Tampa. Okay. Uh, and those are going to be quite interesting. Virginia has uh, projects to improve their, um, uh, their Amtrak service. Uh, Illinois is the one state that uh, really actually has higher speed rail service now. Uh, it's not completed yet, but between Chicago and St. Louis, they've been putting tracks down. Uh, they do have service up to 110 miles an hour on some of that mm -hmm. area, uh, some of that stretch of highway of uh, railroad now, and they're also looking at uh, doing the same thing between Chicago and Detroit. Okay, so a lot of there are a lot of projects out there. There are. Yeah, so that's very good. Now I know you, you talked about money, and I know you're a nonprofit, but again, there are always people that can respond to you and say, if you'd like to help us out financially, where do, where do they write to or who do they write the check to, I guess is a polite way to say it. Um, there's a couple of different ways of uh, making a uh, c contribution to All Aboard Erie. One is to go to any widget financial office and, and let them know that they would like to make a contribution to our project, which is called High Speed Erie. It, and just pause it there a minute. It, it's interesting that widget actually was GE funding. GE, um, um, their, Heritage. Their, their, yeah, yeah. And then if you look carefully at their name, their new ad points out, you can see the G and the E and the T for GE Transportation. So isn't it appropriate that they are saying you can go, I'm sorry, you continue <laughs> with that. You can, go to, you can go to any widget. Any and, widget office mm -hmm. and uh, tell them you'd like to make a contribution to All Aboard Erie or our project, which is called High Speed Erie. Mm -hmm. And that's one way. And the other is uh, to, you can contact us and make a contribution uh, directly to us at All Aboard Erie. Okay. It goes without saying then, Brian, certainly looking at this, very impressive, that I would think that uh, common sense prevails, that you bring in passenger transportation and the other half of that equation would be economic development. I mean, the, the two just go hand in hand. That's, that's uh, right. Can you elaborate on that? Like, as to, as to, if this happens, we can tell you that the economy will grow by 12% or 16% or some, some, some sort of a number there. Yes. Um, we know uh, from history that wherever transportation uh, develops, whether it's rail or light rail, um, that economic development will follow in those locations. If we were to build a new train station for high-speed rail in Erie somewhere, um, you would see a tremendous amount of economic development taking place around that, that station. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that uh, is attractive uh, for cities is that it will draw people back to the city um, to around a, um, a central transportation hub um, and that's what the younger generations, uh, especially, is looking at now. The millennial generation exactly, loves yes. that. Yeah, they, they really want that. Um, the car is not necessarily their choice. I mean, yes, but uh, not, not necessarily so. Okay, um, I wanted to ask you, too, that um, 
the, the economic development of this is so obvious, and yet it's taken 50 years or more. Let me be indiscreet here and impolite. Is it the lobbying and the various power centers that say, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea, but we, we don't want that one right now. We're going to do this one right now. Is there a lot of hmm, the dark side against you? <laughs> Well, I, I think it's not so much uh, any kind of uh, malevolent uh, force out there that's uh, stopping a high-speed rail, but clearly there are entrenched, entrenched interests in um, the, mm -hmm. the highway system. Okay. Uh, I mean, we have built this tremendous uh, interstate uh, highway infrastructure, um, which now needs to be maintained, and the bridges are, are deteriorating and getting older, 50 years old. The interstate right. highway system is 60-some years old, and so much of that needs to be replaced or repaired, and that that costs money. So mm -hmm. we are facing a crisis not only in transportation but in infrastructure which is, is well documented and uh, it's uh, very incumbent uh, upon this, uh, our leaders at the state and federal level to find ways of financing. Yeah, you're kind um, because we all know that the gas tax has gone up first of the year and uh, that's going to be used for the bridges and roadways and that's a big ticket item there and I didn't hear any train talk in among that discussion, did you? I heard bridges and yeah. roadways. I yeah. didn't hear train talk. Yeah. So it helps to have people in high places to kind of redirect the conversation. That's right. Okay. And, and we, believe, we believe we are building momentum towards that. I think people, it's what they call the tipping point, and we believe we're still uh, getting to that tipping point. Okay. Again, this is Brian Pitzer. He is with All Aboard Erie right here, High Speed Erie, Destination Future, the proposed routes or not. And I'd like to ask you a question out there. How many of you have never written, written on a train? The young lady who's floor managing here, have you ever ridden on a train? Yes, no, she has, okay. <laughs> I'm wondering how many people have not ridden on a train. Um, what do you think? What do you think the numbers are? Well, I suspect it, and it's, it's pretty high, uh -huh. um, uh, especially in this part of the country, where Erie only has um, two trains a day on Amtrak, and right. both go through in, in the wee hours of the morning, one at 1.30, one the other around, around 7.30. Um, and so a lot of people uh, probably don't even know it, it, it exists, it goes through Erie. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, I suspect there's generations of people, uh, of families who have not ridden a train. I have. I have ridden it and I found it quite pleasurable. Um, it's just, it's pleasurable. Now that, because I'm a little older than everybody else, everybody perhaps, but I do think that you hit something that the, the millennials here uh, want this and want it to work. Uh, they see it at so many levels of being so good as to who they are. And I, I, I applaud you for doing that. Again, this is Brian Pitzer. He's with All Aboard Erie. And if you need to know more about that group, how do they find out, Brian, again? Uh, they can contact us by email at rail at allaboarderie.com. Okay. Or go to our Facebook page, uh, which is All Aboard Erie on Facebook. Or we uh, can call our cell phone number, which is 814 0617. I bet you answer the phone. <laughs> I bet I do. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's talk about mass transportation. Let's maybe step out of your comfort just for a second here. Um, pretty much the federal government decides that you have to have a metropolitan transit system made up of buses, and uh, all, all communities seem to have that. Um, can you see any sort of a plan where your busing system, the busing system currently in place will be able to take riders to this terminal or wherever it is. I, I don't know how that might work. I'm, I'm just dreaming out loud here. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, we, uh, we believe uh, Hall Aboard Ear is not just about trains, but okay. we're also okay. involved with transit and, and um, biking and hiking and, and pedestrian traffic and so on. Mm -hmm. and, and the best transportation transportation systems are ones which are integrated. They take into account the buses, trains, and uh, other forms of transportation and integrate them so that they all work together. Um, so it's um, important for us uh, to recognize that in any kind of planning that uh, wherever, wherever a station might be built that there are other forms of transportation to meet the, the riders there and take them to wherever they want to go mm -hmm. uh, locally. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Europe. Europe has been so successful with this. One of my notes from you said that people who have experienced uh, high-speed rail in Europe, they actually swear by it. You know, I mean, and people who have traveled to Europe come back and go, this is incredible. Why don't we have this? 
That's my tough question to you. Why don't we have this? <laughs> we think that uh, you know, uh, people who have been to Europe and ridden the trains, it's like, uh, it's like high definition. Once you've experienced high definition TV, you, you don't want to go back yeah. to, the, to standard uh, broadcast. And we think that's the same uh, for high speed rail. Once you've experienced um, what true high speed rail c can do, um, it's going to be hard to go back to what we have now for most Americans. I can understand that, yeah, I can understand that. So, let's, uh, <laughs> let's take the table as your goal. I always like to use the big round table. Here. <laughs> How far into the table's circumference here, or even the, di the diameter or the radius, any one you want to use, how far along are you in completing your task? Where would you put yourself? Well, if you want to use a percentage or a bar graph, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we would be a pretty uh, slim piece of pie on, on that, uh, uh, that uh, pizza right now. Okay. Um, because uh, our first goal is to raise $25,000 for a route study. Uh, we're only a few thousand dollars into that. Mm -hmm. Beyond that then comes a full-fledged feasibility study, which is uh, uh, approximately $100,000. So so uh, we're just getting started with our fundraising. Mm -hmm. um, we think our awareness is growing uh, very rapidly in, in this area. People, because of, of your efforts, Phil and others, and by the way, thank you very much to the County Council for supporting uh, You're uh, welcome. Uh, our project. Yes. Um, and uh, we, we would hope that others would follow, follow your lead. Mm -hmm. um, but there's, there's many steps we have to take, but we think once we get the first step, uh, uh, accomplish, which would be the uh, the route study. We'll have something to show people and right. say, this is what it's going to look like. This is what we can achieve. This is how much it's going to cost. This is what it, how long it's going to take to uh, go from point A to mm -hmm. point B, from Erie to Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And uh, people will then have something concrete to, to look at and say, I think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I get the sense of what you're saying is really there's no national comprehensive plan going on here. We have a plan here, we've got one here, he's got one there, we're over here. Do you need a nationally comprehensive plan or is it, can it succeed with a bright light here and a bright light there? <laughs> well, you're absolutely right, Phil. Uh, there is no comprehensive national plan. Uh, the, the federal government through, its, through the FRA, the Federal Railroad Administration, mm -hmm. has come up with, with a list of about a dozen what they call high-speed rail corridors. But unfortunately, those corridors don't always connect to each other. Mm. Uh, the, uh, the East Coast corridors, uh, for example, the Keystone Corridor here in Pennsylvania connects uh, Philadelphia to Harrisburg to Pittsburgh, but goes no further west. Okay. Same thing with the Empire Corridor in New York, goes from New York City to, to Albany to Buffalo, but once again, no further west. Okay. And the Midwest Corridors go uh, from Cleveland, excuse me, from Chicago to Cleveland, but no further east. So Erie and Youngstown, say, are mm -hmm. in this, no man's land where mm -hmm. no corridors are uh, designated for this. Columbus, Ohio is the largest city in the United States that doesn't have Amtrak service at all. Really? That's right. And it's the largest city in the state of Ohio. It is. And has is. no Amtrak service. No. Is it because of its location? It is. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, it just happens to be not on the, the routes between any other cities. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately, uh, that's something that needs to be corrected, and the people in Columbus are working very hard to make that connection to Chicago. Would, would people be willing to be taxed for this, or how are you going to raise the money to do this? I mean, this, this, this would be a number that's astronomical when you hear what it costs per mile to, like, say, put a new highway in. You know, it's a million a mile at least. Yes, uh, the the cost of building a new highway versus uh, cost of building new rail is significantly different. Highways are much more expensive. Much more expensive. Um, and the the, ra the way that uh, highways funded themselves was a gasoline tax, mm -hmm. the federal excise tax on on gasoline. So that's how they built the interstate hi uh, highway system. Um, this would be an, a great time right now when gasoline prices are falling, to add a, a sliding gas tax. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, f let's say for every 10 cents uh, that gas prices fall, you add it one cent uh, to um, uh, your, your gasoline tax. And this could be done at the federal level or the state level. And so let's say, uh, it, historically here, as we've seen, gasoline prices have fallen from $3 to mm -hmm. $2 a gallon. Mm -hmm. Well, if you had a, that kind of sliding tax, uh, sliding tax, you'd have now 10 cents a gallon more uh, taxes 
uh, which could fund an enormous amount of infrastructure, not only rail, but highways as well. I hear what you're saying. I'm reading up on this, and you mentioned that the price of fuel, and I gotta assume the airlines use what, kerosene, I think it is, uh, something like that that the, the cost is dropping, but they haven't dropped the price of their flights. <laughs> in fact, they, depending when you book it, you, 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 you gotta just grab the, mag, the, the magic ring there and the rare ground at the right time, that they uh, have managed to, I don't know, just gouge people with their uh, fees if you want this, if you want that, if you want a pillow, if you wanna sit here, if you wanna sit there, you know. Um, I think what you're saying, though, too, is that political initiative is what it's gonna take to fund this, because this is gonna to have to happen in some dark smoke cigar-filled room somewhere to be trite there. This is how it's gonna happen. Somebody's gonna to have to say, we're gonna take this and build this. You think the people are up for that? I, I, I think they're coming to that point, I, I really mm -hmm. do. For the reasons we've talked about, mm -hmm. our generation, Phil, is retiring and we're wanting to drive less and the, uh, or uh, certainly drive less in the winter time. Mm -hmm. The millennial generation is more interested in spending time with their social media than they are in, in, in driving as well. So the, the population, uh, from a demographic standpoint, is, is moving in that direction. Uh, we know that, that uh, that people are driving less than they did yeah. uh, 20 years ago. So the, the demand is, is going to increase and uh, um, it's just, I think, I believe it's just a matter of time. I think you're right, I just wanna read something here. Um, if your flight, uh, no, here it is. Readership is at an all time high on Amtrak, more than 33 million riders last year. That's a sizable number. I mean, you can bank on that there. More than 400,000 passengers on the Lakeshore Limited. The Lakeshore Limited being? The, the Amtrak train that goes through Erie, connecting mm -hmm. the East Coast and the Midwest uh, right through Erie. All right, we've got a couple of minutes left. Give us your best shot. You've been doing that for the last 26, seven minutes though. So. Brian Pitzer again with All Aboard Erie, and how can people help? What should they be aware of? Where are you headed? Et cetera, et cetera. Because you've certainly made enormous progress in the last two, couple, two years, I think. Thank you, Phil, and thank you for, for allowing me to spend some time with oh, you today. Oh, pleasure. Um, the, n nothing gets done in America without a study. And uh, from whether it's uh, a simple um, backyard project to, uh, uh, to uh, a major interstate highway, you have to conduct a study and that's where we are right now. Okay. Uh, and we're asking for a, a modest $25,000 to get us started and from there uh, it'll, it'll, it'll grow. I bl firmly believe that we will have high speed rail in mm -hmm. Erie, it's just a question are we going to be the first or are we going to be the last mm -hmm. to have high speed rail. Brian Pitzer. All aboard Erie. Thanks for joining us. Thank Appreciate you, it. Phil. Appreciate it. And thank you very much for joining us. I'm Phil Fatika. Until next time, take care. You're watching the Mill Creek Government Channel, powered by WQLN Public Media.